So I'm rubbing this off, right? Solvent, how does solvent affect the rate of reaction of SN, reaction occurring through SN2 mechanism? Now, see, if you have a nucleophile, NU minus, now this nucleophile is surrounded all over from all side by solvent molecules. Now there's a cage of solvent from all side covering that nucleophile layer by layer that's what solvent does now this thing this particular thing that this surrounding of a reagent by the solvent molecule is called solvation so actually solvation means the surrounding of a reagent whatever you put in a solvent surrounding of that reagent by the molecules of solvent that is solvation if that solvent is water in particular that will be called as a hydration so hydration is a special case of solvation where the solvent is water okay solvation will occur solvation when occurs then if the solvent is polar then what will happen is when you have a negative charge on the nucleophile then the positive part of the solvent will surround this negative charge if you have water then the positive end is hydrogen oxygen is the negative end being more electronegative hydrogen is the positive end so this will be surrounded by all sides by hydrogen opposite sides at opposite charges attract each other so this positive end of the solvent will be surrounding this nucleophile from all the sides although the charge is very less this is only del plus on hydrogen but there will be many many molecules surrounding the solvent uh, the nucleophile so the uh, cumulative force of attraction between the solvent and the nucleophile will be considerable if the solvent is more polar then this force of attraction will be more so as such what is happening is there's an empty orbital the solvent ha this nucleophile has cited suppose that empty orbital is here and this nucleophile is dying to go and puts its electron into the empty orbital and these solvent molecules are acting like villains stopping this nucleophile to move to change its position to go and put its electron into the empty orbital so there will be a cage of solvent layer by layer and that will prevent this nucleophile to put its electron into the empty orbital now if that case that there will be more number of layers if there is more amount of attraction if the solvent layer is more polar if suppose uh, suppose when you take a paper when you take a paper and if, if you keep a magnet beneath that paper then even because of the shielding of that paper if you take a magnetic substance that magnet will still attract that magnetic substance right but if you take a uh, wood a very s very thick wood then the magnetic effect of that uh, magnet on any magnetic substance will be considerably decreased so what will happen is this this electronic wave have to move out into this empty orbital when you have a strong thick layer of solvent then this electronic transition becomes more and more difficult very slowly through some tiny thin path that electronic wave will move out through a very difficult path and go into the empty orbital so the whole process of transition will take lots of time that will decrease the rate of reaction and that thick layer will be formed if that solvent is more polar because if it is more polar it will have more charges so even after a considerable thickness of layer is still the force of attraction will be considerable to still increase the thickness right so the solvent is more polar that surrounding the whole thing that we understand now as solvation we will call it only solvation now this thing i'm not going to repeat what solvation is the surrounding of solvent uh, the nucleophile or any reagent you put into the solvent by the molecules of solvent is solvation now if we have a more polar solvent obviously we understand that solvation the effect of solvation will be more or the extent of solvation will be more if the extent of solvation will be more there will be more isolation between this antibonding or the substrate and the nucleophile that will decrease the rate of reaction all right so the bottom line of this discussion is what is it if you increase polar polarity of the solvent then the rate of reaction of sn2 will decrease so if you increase polarity rate of reaction will decrease so these will be the three common factors governing the rate of reaction of sn2 number one nucleophilicity number two nature of living group 
Number three, polarity of the solvent. If the solvent is more polar, rate of reaction will go down because of the isolation of nucleophile and the antibonding orbital. Let's complete the theory of SN2 and now we can start the problems. Let's start with the level of NCERT. In NCERT, uh, they'll give you problems like this. They'll ask you, arrange the following substrate in the order of increasing rate of reaction via SN2 mechanism. Oh, so I have given you four substrates. Suppose they all are proceeding through SN2 mechanism and we have already studied SN2 mechanism. You have to arrange them in the increasing order of rate of reaction. So whichever have least rate of reaction first, whichever has most, last. So what do you think? Which one will have most rate of reaction? Uh, now I haven't given you solvent, considering solvent is same all cases. I haven't given you a nucleophile, considering nucleophile is same in all the cases. Now the leaving group <laughs> is also same. So what are you left with? The, you're left with the fourth factor actually, which we must have discussed. Or doesn't matter, we'll discuss now. The fourth factor, which is our important factor. So uh, actually what you will do is we'll add that factor into the f list of three factors we have studied. The fourth factor, which is indeed um, one of the most important factor, indeed rather the most important factor, which we should have done. The most important factor is hindrance. Now as you understand, now as you perceive SN2, as you visualize it, it's very clear what's happening. You have a carbon making a bond in the front, having an empty orbital at the back. You have a nucleophile coming on the back, putting its electron into the empty orbital. This is the first thing. And then from the front, electron goes away. Now nucleophile have to approach and now uh, from after studying resonance and hyperconjugation things we understand that electronic transition occurs when the orbitals comes very close by. Hyperconjugation occurred from only from alpha not from beta, gamma or delta because uh, distance increases then this electronic transition is not possible. So nucleophile have to come sufficiently close to this antibonding in order to start shedding its electron into this antibonding molecular orbital. So the distance have to be very uh, considerably less at max a distance of, of one single bond. Suppose there are bonds all around and there are big groups all around and it becomes more difficult for any nucleophile to approach or to come near this carbon because this carbon will be having a tetrahedral shape. Tetrahedral shape is something like this. So in suppose if you have uh, this and this 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 atom is carbon, this carbon is having making four bonds, there are four groups all around, this is the tetrahedral structure. Now suppose this bond is represented by this blue marker, then this is the bond and correspondingly on the board we draw this, this seems to be planar but actually this is not. Now this is opening uh, from one side all over the space and you have an anti-bonding of this bond because the electron from this bond is going to be shed out into the bonding or vital of the leaving group, whatever this chlorine or bromine or whatever leaving group is here. So we are really concerned with the anti-bonding of this atom, this bond. The anti-bonding as we have already discussed is oriented just opposite to the bonding. So the anti-bonding will be somewhere here, just opposite to the bonding molecular orbital. So you have a anti-bonding orbital here, that anti-bonding orbital is surrounded all over from these three bonds and the groups attached to these three bonds. And if the groups attached are really heavy, they'll create sufficient amount of hindrance and as if they will be acting as a shielding sh of that anti-bonding and it will not be possible for any of the nucleophile to come close near to this, that anti-bonding orbital because of repulsion by these heavy three groups. If they're hydrogen, then that is okay. The hindrance will not be sufficient. That nucleophile can come closer to the electro uh, to anti bonding and shed its electron. But if they are not hydrogen, they are carbon, methyl, ethyl, butyl or even higher groups, then they will 
pose considerable amount of repulsion to the incoming nucleophile a nucleophile won't come very close nearby if it don't come near close nearby then th the transfer of electron won't be initiated because the orbitals have to come close enough the empty orbital and the orbital of the nucleophile containing that electron if they cannot come close enough then the transition will not be initiated hence the whole of the reaction will not take place because